If you want to go down that AI art rabbit hole and make stunning landscapes, photorealistic images, or anime heroes, then Midjourney is a great place to start, and I'm here to show you how. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the midjourney.com website and sign up. By clicking on this little button down here, you'll get this neat little pop-up, and it'll allow you to sign up either using your Discord account or your Gmail account. So just click on the proper button, fill out the form, and away you go. But I'll warn you ahead of time, Midjourney is not a free site. They have no free options. So let me show you what the pricing is for Midjourney. Midjourney has several different options ranging from $8 a month if you pay on the yearly plan to $96 a month. And each one comes with slightly different perks. The first one only allows you to have 200 images per month. Trust me, that's not a lot. It might be something good to start with, get your feet wet, see if it's something you like, but you're gonna soon wanna upgrade if you enjoy it. Trust me, this is the case. The second one gets you 15 hours of fast generation. So that's basically as many images as you can generate in 15 hours. And that is a lot of images. I have the pro plan, which allows 30 hours of fast generations and I've never used it yet and I produce a lot of images. And then there's the mega plan for people with more money than time. So yeah, those are your options. But once you've got your membership paid for, let's dive into what the various options do. Let's start at the top, explore. Now this is a very cool little feature where it can give you inspiration as to what other people are doing. But beyond the inspiration, if you click on one of the images, it will give you the prompt that somebody used to create that image. And then you can just copy that and use it to your heart's content. So next we have the create button. Now, in here, you can type in what you wanna see. So let's say I want an image of a horse wearing a flat cap. Press enter and it starts generating my image. And after a few moments, we have four images of horses wearing flat caps, all looking very stylish and dapper. If you wanna see what they are look like in a little bit bigger form, you can just click on one, and then you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll through the various images and find one that you like. If you want, you can download the image. You can just right click it and say, save image, copy the image, or copy the image URL. Each one of these has different features or different reasons for doing them, I should say. Also, under the create, you'll notice that they have this little settings tab here. So if you click on that, you can do things like change the layout, the format of the image you're doing. Like if you want something for your cell phone, which is a nine by 16, taller than it is wide. Or if you wanna do something for your desktop, which is 16 by nine, that's a way to do it. Also, you can do just straight one by one if you want like a little profile picture or something like that. I typically use 16 by nine because I do a lot of videos and those come in handy. But then there are times where I do nine by 16 if I'm doing like YouTube shorts or something like that. Over on, under aesthetics, you have different options here. Stylization, which basically influences how strongly Mid Journey's aesthetic is applied to your image. A lot of these are pretty much the same. Weirdness just throws in a lot of random stuff that Midjourney thinks is fun. You have variety, which again, can put in more random stuff. It doesn't pay so much attention to what you typed. It just kind of does its own thing. Then you have mode over here. You have standard and raw. The difference between standard and raw is basically standard pays attention to your prompt and tries to give you exactly what you typed in. Raw tries to do it in a more photographic style. So if you want something in a cinematic style or photorealistic, doing it in the raw format is a preferable way to do it. It'll probably give you better results. Underneath that, you have the version. Now the version, basically Midjourney's latest version is 6.1, but there is a sub version to Midjourney and that is called Niji, and that is up to version six. Niji is for doing anime style images. We'll touch on that in a little bit so you can see what the differences are. And then there's personalize. 
Personalize is a setting within Midjourney's website where you can rate your own images and then apply your personal style overall from the images that you've curated and rated and said that you loved. And it will say, okay, you like this particular style. Let's do this image in that particular style. Over here under more options, you have speed. There's relax, which if you're paying for one of the upper tiers of mid journey, relax means it's a slower uh, image creation, but it doesn't charge you fast hours for it. Then there's fast, which basically as it, as it sounds, it charges you fast hour time for creating those images. Each image takes about mm, three to five seconds to create on average. And then there's turbo, which charges you twice as much as a standard fast hour. So if it takes 10 seconds in fast hours, it takes 20 seconds in turbo. But the amount of time it takes to create the image is actually faster. And then below that, we have stealth. Stealth basically means if you have stealth turned off, every image you create is going to show up in public feeds. So if somebody looks at your profile on Midjourney, they'll see all the images that you created with the stealth off. If you have stealth on, the only person that can see those images is you. So it's something to keep in mind if you want to share images or not share images. So we did a, uh, we did a horse with a flat cap. Now, if we choose to do Niji, we can go down here and change it, change the version down to Niji, and it will automatically change the image style to Niji, but there's another way to do it as well. There's dash dash Niji. And if you do that, it's the same as setting the version, but it's, a, it's basically overriding your default here. So if I put that there, press enter, we give it a few seconds and it should come up with an anime style horse wearing a flat cap. And there we have it. We have anime horses wearing flat caps and it does a pretty darn good job with it. Now we will move on to the next one, which is edit. Okay. So under the edit tab, you have two options. You have edit from a URL, which means you can link to an image that's somewhere on the web or you can upload an image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my images that I created earlier, bring it over here and do edit uploaded image, give it a few moments, and then after a moment or two, it could take a couple minutes depending on how overloaded the mid journey servers are, but typically in under 30 seconds, the image is uploaded to mid journey and you can then edit it. Now, here's the trick to editing. The first thing you wanna do is Upon looking at your image, you want to determine what you want to add and then where you're going to add it. So you use the erase button over here. You can increase the brush size over here and then remove the section that you want to have your edit in. And then up here, what you have to do is you have to start with your original prompt and then add in what you want edited as well. So for example, I have a blue horse with a flat cap with a red background and I want to add a cow wearing a top hat next to the horse over here. So I type that in up here. I then press enter. And after a few moments, it's going to give me exactly what we're looking for. And then after about a minute, we have four images of cows next to our horse. Some with top hats, some without. Although I gotta admit, this guy's looking pretty darn cool. Anyway. That is the basics of editing. You can change the aspect ratio. You can change the color of the background if you wanted to. But the main thing is when you're editing, you have to put back your original prompt and then change the prompt to fit how you want the image edited. Otherwise, you're not gonna get any changes whatsoever. And then we have the personalized tab. Now, if you remember earlier, I, was, I told you that you could rate your own images and tell them which ones you liked, which ones you didn't like, how much you liked them, etc. And from that, it will build a personal profile of the types of images that you like to see. But if you want to go between different types of images from your general photorealistic to having maybe an anime style or a graphic image style, you can group those images together and say, this is a 
This is a style that I want to apply to my images. For example, this group here, I've taken and put down as graphic style. They all have this similar type of look and feel to them. And if I want to apply that image in the future to other images, I can easily just apply this style to those new images. I can click on copy code and I have my prompt up here, which we just used before. I click on run. It will now give me a horse with a flat cap and a cow with a top hat in this particular type of look and feel. So let's go over here and check out exactly what it came up with. And as you can see, it came up with some very interesting images based off of that style that I gave it earlier. No flat caps for the horse though. That's interesting. Got the top hat. Anyway, that's the fun of mid journey. You never know exactly what you're gonna get, but it's typically always something awesome. Then we have the organized tab. And here you can go through and move your images around based upon different groups, different styles, different uh, versions of the artwork that you created, whether they're square or landscape or portrait, whatever makes you comfortable in organizing your images. Because if you're like me, you've created several thousand images and you never know where they are unless you go through and organize them some way, which I don't do as you can plainly see. Then we have chat. Now chat is kind of fun because it gives you a chance to see what other people are doing live. You can see what prompts are typing in, what kind of images they're getting back. You can copy the prompts and use them for your own uh, images. And it's interesting to see how other people's minds work when they're creating images. It's kind of fun. Now they have several different groups where general chaos, which is basically everyone creating anything that they can think of. They have prompt craft where people are trying to focus in on one particular type of image um, and trying different prompts and just honing in on that. Then they have daily theme where they give you a specific type of image that they want to see for that day. And you can see what other people have done with that same type of specific thing. For example, it's a Disney style raccoon and some people have come up with some pretty imaginative uh, images based off of that. And then you have the newbies channel, which is basically people like yourselves who are just trying out new things and want to see what it looks like. And the advantage of doing this also is sometimes if you post an image and people like that or they want to see a small change to it, they will repost your same image, but with a minor, minor modification to the prompt that you can then look at and go, oh, I should have thought of that. Or now I can add that to my prompt and get something slightly different. It gives you inspiration on how to move forward. And then lastly, we have the tasks. The tasks are just simple things you can do that either help you or help the community or do both. For example, there's curate the community front page. And when you click on that, you go over here and you can click on images that you like, and then it will take that as a vote for that image. And if that image gets enough votes, it will show back up here on the community homepage for other people to see and enjoy. And then under also under there, you have rank aesthetics and rank aesthetics for the Niji style. Now, those three particular things, if you do them enough and you're one of the top ranking people, you can actually gain some fast hours for generating your own images. So it helps mid-journey and it helps you as well. So it's a win-win. Then there's some surveys that if you wanna go and take them, you're more than happy to do it. And then down here at the bottom is rate ideas. Now, what they do here is they give you a certain number of points and they show you some features that they're thinking about adding to mid journey in the near future. And you can vote on these in a weighted fashion to help them determine which features they should be adding anytime soon. So that is how to use mid journey in a hopefully short and concise manner. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments. And as always, I wish you a fantastic day. Have a great one. Bye-bye.